I'm back with another video. The Canadian Rockies might be one of the most spectacular mountain ranges in the world. This video is the first of two videos about the times that I've spent there. Here we go. This trip begins with a flight to Calgary, Alberta in Canada. Why am I in Alberta? The Canadian Rockies are here. Canadian Rockies specifically, at least for the purposes of this video, Banff National Park. Banff National Park, also known as the gateway to the Canadian Rockies, lies 144 kilometers or 89 miles from Calgary, Alberta. Banff National Park was established as a national park in 1885. It is the first national park in Canada. It is the world's third national park. It is visited by 4.5 million people a year. A lot of people show up here. So when you come up here, there's no, you won't be alone. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, otherwise known by its acronym, UNESCO, named Banff National Park a World Heritage Site in 1984. Frankly, I'm not sure what took them so long. It doesn't take long walking around here to see that this place lives up to that villain. In the center of Banff National Park is Banff Township. It is the only national park that actually has a city within its borders. In order to live in Banff Township, you have to be a full-time employee inside Banff Township. You can't live in Banff and then drive somewhere else to work. No, 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 no. You got to work right there. You got to be a full-time employee, so that means you got to work there all day, every day. The city planners in Banff had always planned on this being a tourist town. It is not an accident that Banff Avenue is directly aligned with Cascade Mountain. That was planned. And it is quite a sight to walk out of any one of these shops, restaurants, or hotels on Banff Avenue, and you look up and you see this. That's the start of a pretty good day. Little known fact about Banff National Park, there are a number of places in the United States where you will read and hear or talk about the Continental Divide. Well, that divide also runs through Canada and the Canadian Rockies. However, this is a three-way divide here. There is water that will drain to the Atlantic Ocean. There's water that drains to the Pacific Ocean. And there's also water that will flow to the Arctic Ocean via Hudson Bay. There are 1,000 miles of hiking trails in Banff National Park. Now, yeah, I did not try and hike them all, but I did do a few. I did a few at certain elevations, some high, some low. If you enjoy hiking, there is a trail out there with your name on it. This is my third time visiting Banff National Park. Each time, it looks and feels different. I've been there in the fall. I've been there in the winter. I've been there in the spring. Don't come in the summer because Banff National Park is visited by four and a half million people per year. And the overwhelming majority of them show up in the summer months. Yeah, so that's not the time that when I really want to be there. My first stop, Lake Minnewanka. Lake Minnewanka, largest lake in Banff National Park. It's 98 feet deep, it's also man-made. There was a little town under there, it was called Minnewanka Landing. They needed some hydroelectricity and dammed the river. And now that town is called Lake Minnewanka. Just looking at the mountains that tower over this lake, and you know why this place is different. You can make a trip just of this location in and of itself. You'll notice as you look at lakes, rivers, and streams around Banff, anywhere in Banff and the Canadian Rockies, the water is turquoise blue. That is from glacial silt. There are a hundred glaciers in Banff National Park. As those glaciers advance and retreat and they grind the earth beneath them, they create silt. As that ice melts, it carries the silt into the lakes, rivers, and streams. There are few things that look like this. The next hike on my list was Johnston Canyon. Johnston Canyon is about 20 miles or 32 kilometers from the town of Banff. There are a couple of ways you can go. You can take Highway 1, which is the Trans-Canada Highway. 
However, let me suggest that you take Highway 1A through the Bow River Valley. It is beautiful. It is the scenic route. It is the route that offers you the best opportunity to see wildlife. I would highly suggest taking that route. Johnston Canyon is roughly three miles out and back. It is the most popular hiking trail in Banff National Park. Lots of people out there. No matter when you go, there is a parking lot there. I would suggest you go early because that parking lot is going to fill up with not only the cars, but the people who ride in. The Johnston Canyon hike is one of the park's best. Much of it is over suspended walkway, actually over the river in the canyon itself. It is a narrow canyon. The walls of the canyon rise above you. You'll hike past several waterfalls. There are two main waterfalls in Johnston Canyon, the lower Johnston Canyon Falls and the upper Johnston Canyon Falls. Now, although you're going to hike past a number of waterfalls, you will know these two when you see them. You can hear the lower falls before you see them. You can walk through a small cave and be just feet from the falls. There's another fall. There, there is some elevation to this hike, not a lot. So, you know, you don't have to be a mountaineer to do this. Just know that this trail is not flat, uh, but you will hike to the upper fall. And it is just as beautiful. Make sure you see them both before you hike out of the canyon. When you leave Johnson Canyon, I would suggest you take the drive through the Bow Valley north to Lake Louise. Now, a couple things about Lake Louise. There are a lot of people there. You can drive. There's a parking lot at Lake Louise that fills up at about 8 o'clock in the morning. You can park there and you can hike. It's a mile, maybe two, to Lake Louise. Or you can ride the Lake Louise shuttle, which I highly recommend. That's what I did. Look, it doesn't matter how many people are there. Do not go visit Banff National Park and not visit Lake Louise. Lake Louise is the most photographed lake in the world. And for a good reason. I've traveled a lot. And, and because that's a number of people have asked me, what is the most beautiful place in the world? And honestly, I don't know that there's actually one place that's more beautiful than the other. There are lots of beautiful places on this planet. But if I had to make a list of maybe five or 10, this is going to be one of them. Lake Louise and the Victoria Glacier above it. One of the most stunning and iconic views on this big blue rock that we all live on. But do more than just come here and look at the lake. You can rent a canoe and canoe in the lake. You can hike along the lake toward the Victoria Glacier. You can spend the day here. If you've ridden the shuttle to Lake Louise, you can also ride the shuttle to Moraine Lake. In fact, you have to ride a shuttle to Mor Moraine Lake. You cannot dr just write this down. You cannot drive to Moraine Lake. There is a parking lot there. It has room for about oh, 50 cars. And that's not nearly enough. So you have to ride the shuttle bus to Moraine Lake. I highly suggest you do that. Because if there's a place that is as beautiful as Lake Louise, it's Moraine Lake. The beauty of these two lakes, the beauty of this place is overwhelming. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. This is my third trip to Banff National Park. And like many of the places that I go, every time I come here, I think about how I can get back here. This one is no different. As the sun sets on Banff, I think about when I'm going to come back again. I'm actually going to be back sooner than you think, because I'm going to do another video about this place. But before I do that, I would like to leave you with these. Thank you for watching. I'll be posting Canadian Rockies Part 2 soon. Please tune in.